All right, even though this is new, these Chinese scooter tanks, you can see in there, they ship with rust. So what you're gonna wanna do, cause you don't want rust in your lines, or you're gonna be having real fun with your carburetor, is uh, get yourself a fuel filter and change it on your main line here. If you're wondering what I'm using, I just got a uh, fuel filter from uh, O'Reilly's and this is the uh, model number here, 7023008D. Um, this is just like something you'd find in their um, uh, like lawn and garden, or not lawn and garden, but their lawn equipment um, section. They got little fuel filters and stuff and that'll fit this hose. Now, thankfully, they give us an arrow showing the, or, uh, the direction of the gas. Make sure you pay attention to that. Some of these don't have arrows. Uh, I would try to get one or um, you'd have to look it up to see which direction the fuel flows in. All right, I like seat clamps or hose clamps, whatever you call them. You screw down and tighten, opposed to the uh, these guys. But uh, I'm just gonna put this back in place like it was because that's what it came with. And uh, I don't think anybody was complaining about it. All right. Um, make sure your hose doesn't get a weird bend in it. It's not, so that's good. All right, so that takes care of our fuel system, so we're good to go. Now, you could um, fix your gas tank. Uh, you could flush it out with vinegar and then flush it with muriatic acid um, and agitate it with, like, you know, putting, uh, like, uh, like nuts down in there and then shaking it really good knocking all the rust off and dumping it and just keep doing that and then blow drying it really good and then get yourself some tank liner like red coat or something um, to fix the problem um, I'm not gonna do all that I, I think just having a fuel filter should uh, should take care of those problems so all right so let's move on to the oil okay so Let's not get confused here. There's a nut right here, or a bolt that's at an angle. That is not your oil drain. It's this guy right here. It's the one closer to the brake pedal and further away from the um, gear shifter. So let's get this oil drained out. Now the oil that comes in this brand new, I've heard it is not really good oil. It is like shipping oil. Uh, and all that and um, you're going to want to use a better oil than what it comes with uh, and also I've heard that there's metal shaving so let's take a look and see what that looks like okay well, the oil looks pretty good I don't know if it's like the gear oil like people say or if it's uh if it's whatever but I will show you this um this guy has a magnet on it it's got a just a hair bit of shavings on it, so it's not terrible. And now my cloth, you can see it's really, really fine. It's not, it's not bad, but it was black at the end. Now it's clean. Make sure you do not over tighten that nut. Just get it snug and then you're good to go. It's a number 17, by the way, which is also the same as your uh, rear axle and front axle, which is cool. The old oil doesn't look too bad, but uh, yeah, I'd change it. Alright, this part is very important. The instructions say specifically SAE 1540. Um, I've heard people talk really good game about Shell Rotella, so I bought a bunch of it. I got a gallon. And uh, it takes 800 milliliters, is what I've been told. And the easiest way to measure that is a cup, a red solo cup that's uh, 16 ounces. So you fill this almost all the way to the top with oil, and that is 400 milliliters. So it needs two of these cups, and uh, you're good to go. All right, so to fill this with oil, you're gonna want a, a good long stem funnel like this, and then locate your oil dipstick, which is right under the muffler here, and Let's see if that fits it. Going at an angle. It's going to be hard to fill this, so unless you got a really cool dipstick that, or not dipstick, uh, oil funnel that I don't have. 
long one's gonna do the trick. It's good to know how much oil to put in it so you're not kind of going back and forth a lot. So uh, let's go ahead and get our shell rotella in there. I'm gonna wanna pour this slowly. All right, so that right there is 400 milliliters. Let's see if I can pour up my cup. You shouldn't believe everything on YouTube. Go a little bit shy of 400. There we go, 800 milliliters. Let's see where that gets us on our, our thing. Cap off our oil. Sounds good and bone dry there. You can see the X's. All you want it somewhere in the middle of the X's. Also, uh, I'm pretty sure this is accurate, but you just want to set your, uh, your dip stick in there. And that gets you a good reading. So you can put it in there, turn it around a little bit, pull it out. There you go. We're at 75%. So it is 800 milliliters. All right, so I guess I can go over some of the things with a brand new scooter. So reading the old instruction manual, there it is right there, the 1540 oil, and you have a break-in period, okay? And you also have, this is the uh, the temperatures at what weight uh, oil you should be running as well. Okay, so here's some of the instructions that you're going to want to do, and it says it on the side too. The first 160 kilometers you want to keep it under 30 kilometers an hour. I think it says it on the side of the bike in English for all of us non-metric people. Where is it? Right here, I think. Okay, the speed, the speed in the first 300 miles should not exceed 25 miles an hour. Okay, so we just got to make sure that we do that. You can see my odometer is at one mile. I guess I run it for a little bit, um, you know, and be be cautioned too that kilometers an hour is on top, miles an hour is on bottom in the small letters. Um, I wonder what our speedometer reads in. I'm gonna guess kilometers. It's kind of uh, kind of back and forth. I'm gonna have to rate. I'm gonna have to actually drive around and see if that thing. That odometer actually reads in miles an hour or kilometers an hour. I'm not sure because the instructions come in both, right? Um, don't know. That's kind of a weird one. The other thing, too, that is really weird. Where is it? Oh, there we go. The first thousand kilometers service should be performed as outlined in the maintenance schedule of the manual. So I believe that involves an oil change. Or where is it? The first kilometers, the first thousand kilometers is the most important one that your motorcycle will receive. So all the engine components will wear in, and this is true. I mean, you're breaking in the motor, um, and you want to change the oil. There it is, in the first thousand kilometers. So that is a bullet point. Um, to make sure you're doing. Like some of these people that I see with these videos, they don't really mention this stuff, and um, you're going to probably want to follow these instructions somewhat even though I'm really bad often with that stuff. Um, it does mention gas. Where is it at? Right here. Now, this is kind of crazy. So it's saying to use 93 octane unleaded uh, type gasoline, and it should be at least 90 octane. Um, that has to do with the timing, right? So... The higher the octane, um, the slower the spark. So you don't get uh, premature ignition is what that's for. So you're going to want to follow that. I didn't think this thing had to run a 93 octane. I mean, uh, you know, I know sport bikes do and stuff because I've had them, but that's kind of crazy. So 
Well, follow the instruction. I mean, it gets pretty good uh, fuel economy, so I, I don't think that's a huge deal. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is put on the uh, gear shifter, and uh, that just kind of slides on this spindle, like so. I'm gonna put this down lower, like you can kind of set it. Um, and the reason for that is I've heard a lot of people with big feet um, don't like this. So this is four down. So you kick the, you know, you kick the gear shifter, you know, one, two, three, four, and then pull it all the way up from neutral. Or you can push this and that's the same as um, up shifting or yeah, shifting back to neutral. So this is reverse shifting and this is uh, shifting through the gears. So uh, it's kind of cool. My, I got another motorcycle that has this set up and, and I do like that. I, I think it's kind of fun. But um, I think I'm gonna keep this uh, pedal lower than um, the peg because, you know, I don't wanna accidentally hit it and I can kind of rest my foot on it maybe. I don't know, we'll see how that works. Um, it has a small uh, bolt that goes in the hole there and it is a number 10. So let's get that attached. Okay, so now we're gonna put on the, uh, the rear rack accessory. So let me go grab that. And it threads in with these bolts. Okay. They leave a little bit of space for right here. And these are acorn nuts that aren't very deep. So I think I'm gonna put it here. And yeah, on the outside, I think. And it's pretty wide. Let's see what size what these are. All right, those nuts are a 14. Just kind of funny. Three washers right there, and there's a washer right here. Okay, Let's see if it seats better now. There we go. All right, move that down. Okay, that goes together much better now. I really wish that had another washer on this side because I don't want to over tighten that acorn nut. Uh, maybe I'll pick up a, another uh, a washer to go on there. But uh, it's tight. It ain't going nowhere. Pull off our cellophane. I don't care for these European style taillights that are clear. Um, a lot of guys I see on YouTube uh, will buy like. Um, the uh, the old school orange ones kind of mimic the original Honda. I like the bar um, because it gives you something to grab onto to pick up the rear end of the bike. Um, grabbing the seat is not the best thing to grab; it's just kind of wobbly, so I, I don't really care for that. All right, let's uh, figure out our wiring here. Like if you open your manual and you flip it to the last page. I mean, for being Chinese screw, this is this is pretty nice. You got a full electrical diagram. So uh, let's see. So blue is your left turn light, 
and light green is your right turn uh, light. And plug the light blue into the light green, like so. The green ground into the double green ground, like so. The other side is already plugged in. This side is orange. Let's run this under. So green ground for the double. It's got like a double plug you can see right there. There's two plugged in there. And then this black, I guess is this side. This is weird. Oh, B is black, not blue. Durr. Whatever. Yeah, and then we get a little bit of wire, which I guess I'll just tuck inside the tail for now. Yeah, it just fits right up in there. That's not too bad. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so let's see. I guess we can install the battery next. battery a battery with ceiling controller needs no water supply and no maintenance do not remove cover while in service after leaving factory the wet loaded battery in storage should be recharged every six months okay before first time or when the battery voltage is below 1275 please charge the battery according to the instructions all right so um this is an AGM gel battery, which is pretty cool. It's kind of a nice battery instead of the, the old lead acid, I guess. It's model MF12V4AH, um, as you can see right there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this on the charger. And I think, I mean, we need to go over and make sure everything's tight, all the nuts and bolts, but I think we're going to be pretty close to our first start. Um, I will mention this too. Also, yeah, I already mentioned it in the manual, 93 octane. Um, some people say uh, ethanol free. Yeah, that's fine and dandy uh, if you can find it. Um, I don't worry about that too much because I run stable and I think stable is uh, a good way to get around having to run eth ethanol free batteries or ethanol free gasoline, sorry. So let's get this charged and then um, we'll try to start it after.